Hi folks. So since this is the very, very last thing that we're going to do this entire year, we're just going to do a pretty quick, uh, fun little project. Um, this should be able to take you as much time as you want to spend on it. Uh, if you are super into this and you really want to throw a lot of effort into it, that's fine by me. If you just want to show the basic um, techniques, that's fine too. What I'm going to demonstrate here is the basic techniques and then uh, some more advanced uh, ways of, of combining photos together. Okay, So uh, the idea is to do something fun. Uh, I'm going to be starting with this. Well, I'll get to that in a second. So I wanted to do something that was fun and um, give you a chance to play around with something that you might want to try on your own. Uh, so I thought about the idea of uh, combining photos together and learning how to combine photos uh, in a in a interesting and realistic way. Uh, so there's this great uh, artist on he's on Twitter. Uh, his his name is James Friedman, and what he does is people send him pictures. Uh, so like this person sent him a picture that says, uh, "Hi bro, can you make more romantic for this photo, please? Thanks." Uh, he's popular all over the world, as you can see. Uh, and he says, no doubt, bro. And so to make it more romantic, he just added the uh, flowers to the guy in the background instead of actually adjusting the people. Uh, here's another one. Uh, hey, Jamie, really a fan of what you do. Can you please erase the guy in the back? He kind of messes up my pick. Thanks a lot. So he took that to mean that uh, the dog was the one sending the email. So he made the dog really huge, took out the dude. Um Here's another one. Hi, James. Your pictures are so great. Can you please make it look as if I'm not standing in a hole in the floor? Best regards, Saskia. So he made her look like she's standing in a sewer in the street. So what he does is he takes these basic pictures that people send them and he changes them exactly like they asked for, uh, but in a hilarious way. Um, so we're not going to do exactly that, but, uh, you know, funny photoshops are great. There's a million more online. You can find them if you look up James Friedman. Uh, there's his Twitter handle if you want to see it. Um, what I've done is I started with this um, painting of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and uh, I altered it like so. So I swapped out all of the original um, heads and swapped them all in for llama heads because... It's funny. Um, so if you look over here on my layers, you'll see that I have a separate layer for each head that I've added in. Okay, uh, This is way more complicated than what I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, I'm just going to ask you to combine any two pictures together. You can make it as funny or as complicated as you want, uh, but you're just going to have to combine two pictures. So in my case here, I have, I don't know, about 20 different pictures. Uh, and if I turn them off, you'll see that the end result um, is just the original painting without any of the uh, heads on there. But So I want to talk about the proper way to do this. Uh, now there's a few weird spots on there. Those are areas where I had to remove parts of the background to make it look correct. Uh, but once I turn them all back on, along with my color adjustments, you'll see there is my final picture. Okay. Um, so I started with this. Uh, the basic technique that we're using uh, involves using a tool called a layer mask. Okay, so this is the original photo. Um, all I did is I found this photo online. Um, I looked up Declaration of Independence painting. Um, now, again, I don't want you to use this picture. I mean, if you want to, you can, but uh, you can literally use any picture that you want, um, any two pictures you want to combine together. So they can be your pictures, they can be pictures from the internet, whatever. Um, Anything is fine. So there's a million of these. This is the one that I used. Um, I just clicked on it. It's on Wikipedia. Click it again, and then click it one more time, and there's the full-size picture. You can tell it's full-size because when I zoom in, it looks real nice. Okay. Um, so I saved this, and I opened it up in Photopia, and so there it is. Okay. So this is my original picture. As you can see, it's just got one layer, just the background, and that's it. What I want to do is I want to start putting in some llama heads, okay? Um, so I have, uh, let me close James Friedman up here, okay? So um, here is a Google image search for llamas, okay?
Okay, there's a million of them. Don't ask me why I chose llamas. I just, whatever, thought they were funny, so I chose llamas. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I'll start with Thomas Jefferson, this gentleman right here. Um, and uh, I'm going to swap his head. He's kind of looking off to the right. I'm going to swap his head for, uh, let's say, uh, I'll use this guy. This guy kind of has a Jeffersonian looking head. It's kind of small, actually. I'll do this one. Um, so this will be this will be Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson Llama. Um, so all I have to do, I mean, there's a lot of ways I can do this. I can save it and open it. Um, the easiest way, I'm going to use this one actually. Uh, the easiest way, in my opinion, is to right click. Actually, I'm not going to use that one. It's really small. Um, all right, I'll use this one. Uh, right click. Copy image. Okay, that's the easiest way. I could save it and then reopen it in Photopia and then copy and paste, but I think the easiest way is literally right click, copy image. Okay, uh, then once I come back to my Photopia tab over here, I go to edit, paste. I could also press control V. Okay, and there is my llama. Okay, now uh, remember, just like in Photoshop, all my tools are over here. So my move tool is right up here at the top. That allows me to move this around wherever I want it. Okay. So there's basically two steps here. What I need to do. Number one, I need to get rid of the background behind the llama. Uh, and I also need to adjust the size. So I need to scale it down so that his head is roughly the size of Jefferson's head. And then I need to also mask out the background to get rid of the background. Okay. So very simply edit, transform, scale. Okay, so this is to adjust the size. I go to the edit, transform, scale. Okay, it's going to pop this box on, uh, these adjustment handles, and that's going to allow me to shrink this down. Now, you'll notice it gets distorted. Okay, you probably or hopefully remember this from class. If I want to keep it from being distorted, I want to maintain the same proportions, hold the shift key, and then as I adjust it, it will not smush or stretch or distort the shape of the uh, of the picture. So I'm going to get it roughly the size that I want, say about like that. Um, and then once I get it the way that I want it, I can either press the check mark up here at the top or press enter on my keyboard. Okay. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can really see what I'm doing here. All right. So here is my llama. Here is my Jefferson. Okay, I'm going to put my llama right on top, like so. So you'll notice that when I paste something in, in Photopia or in Photoshop, uh, it creates a new layer. Okay, so here's my new layer, which has the llama on it. If I want, I could rename this. Um, click it, like that. Um... Well, I guess I can't just rename that layer. That's interesting. Okay, so I just learned something new. All right. Um, info? Nope. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, remove this background. So the way, there's a couple different ways I can remove a background. I mean, there's a lot of different ways. The most obvious way is to use the eraser tool, uh, but I'm going to ask you not to do this. Uh, the eraser tool is uh, not a great tool for doing this, and the main reason is because... I can't fix my mistakes. Okay, so if I end up erasing something, and then tomorrow I come back and I decide I I want to get rid of that erasing, I want to undo my erasing, I won't be able to do it. Um, similarly, if I you know make a mistake and let's say take this ear off, and then later I decide I want to put that ear back on, I can't. It's too late. Okay, so. The proper technique is to use what's called a layer mask. So right down here at the bottom of my layers, so I have my layer one selected, and then right at the bottom of my layers, here is my layer mask button. Looks like a little uh, square with a circle inside it. And when I click it, it adds to my layer this little guy. So I now have my layer, and I have my mask. So this is the mask. Uh, the way the mask works is pretty cool. Um, here's how it works. I take my brush tool. I want to make sure that I'm using black. So black is on the top. That's the color I'm actually painting with. Um, 
I'm going to use a hard edge on my brush here. If I use a soft edge, um, it'll nicely kind of fade the edges of my picture. I don't want to do that. I actually want to have nice, crisp, sharp edges. So I'm going to turn my hardness all the way up to 100. Make my size a little bit smaller. Okay. Now, uh, here's how a layer mask works. Anything that I paint black. So right now, I'm using this. This is a little bit confusing, I know. But I'm using my brush. I'm using black. And as I paint with it, you'll notice I over here I have the mask selected. Okay. Anything that I paint black, apologies if you hear the construction happening in the background, anything that I paint black becomes invisible. Okay. So here I am painting all of the area around, zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing, everything around the llama I'm removing by painting it black. Okay. Now, it's a little confusing because I'm, I'm painting black, but obviously I'm not seeing any black. I'll show in a second exactly what I'm doing here. So, depending on how complicated your object is, you can spend as much or as little time as necessary to do this step. But I'm just carefully here making my brush smaller to go into the details. Remember, you can use your bracket keys on your keyboard to adjust the size of your brush. Again, apologies for the power tools in the background there. Got some work happening in the house right now. Um, there we go. Okay, so I have completely now removed the entire background from my llama, just like that. Okay, let's say I take this ear off. Okay, so here's the great thing about layer masks. So this is my layer. This is my mask. I'm looking at it over here on my layer menu. This is my layer. This is my mask. If I click on my layer, this guy, and start painting, I'm going to actually be painting black. If I click on my mask and start painting, it removes those pixels. Okay, now if I've made a mistake, like I did right here, I lost that ear by accident. All I have to do is switch to white, and I can bring it right back. Okay. So the great thing about masks is that they're temporary, and they are highly, highly adjustable. So I can, at any point in the future, come back and alter and adjust that mask to fix my mistakes. Okay. So this makes it much, much, much better than using an eraser. Okay. All right. So there is my llama position it right where I want. Now, at the bottom, this doesn't look too good. I want to paint around his collar. So I'm going to, again, switch to my brush tool right here. Make sure I'm using black. Take my brush and carefully paint that area where his collar is. And what I'm going to try to do here is I want to make it look like his neck is actually going into the shirt collar. So I'm using white to bring back this area, just like so, and there you have it. Okay, so now I'm not thrilled with that. It doesn't look too great. I actually think it looks too high. I'm going to grab this move tool, move it down a little bit, and then I'm just going to adjust that again. Again, I'll paint that neck like so, around his collar, like so, switch to white, and bring that back. There we go. Okay. So there you go. That's it. So that is exactly what I did for this entire picture. Okay. So all of those heads. Hey, you know what's crazy? I used the exact same llama for my example as I did for this one. Holy cow. What a weird coincidence. Okay. So um, each of these is from a different picture. Okay. So for each head, I picked uh, a new picture. You know, use this guy for one, use this guy, use this guy. They're all slightly different, uh, but each one is slightly different. Now, I did reuse some of them. A little secret. Uh, you know, like a couple of these heads reappear in different places. Hopefully you can't really tell uh, unless you really look really closely. Um, but uh, I have enough variety in the heads that um, you wouldn't really notice that there's a few of them that are that are similar. Um 
So here is my complete finished picture. Um, now, if that's all you want to do, great. But I want to talk about a couple of other things, a couple of other additions that you can make. Um, if you have areas that don't work so well, for example, let's say you have um, cut out your head uh, and you want it to be facing the other direction. So like what if I want to put this head on this guy over here? Okay, uh, my edit menu, transform, scale. Okay, so this allows me to, again, make the size bigger and smaller. Okay, uh, but I can also, if I right click, it gives me other options, uh, such as flip. And that will take that head and switch directions. So it's now facing the other direction. So right click, flip horizontally. That face flips it the other direction. Okay, um, I could also do things such as distort. Distorting is really, really helpful in some situations. It allows me to grab the corners here and adjust them. So like if I wanted, if, if it does, something about my picture doesn't quite look right, I want to make it, adjust it slightly, maybe, maybe uh, you know, make one side a little bit squished or make one side a little bit larger, you can use this, this distort adjustment to do that, okay? Uh, keep in mind, it can always control or command Z to undo your last step um, and go back to a previous step. Um, how about the situation where I have, for example, um, an area of the background that I need to remove? So, for example, what if my um, the back of this guy's head is sticking out past the side of the llama that I want to use? Or what if there's something in the background that shouldn't be there. Like I can see a guy's chin st sticking out or I can see someone's hair popping out of the back. Well, here's how we fix that. So let's say, for example, I'm going to move my uh, llama over here to John Adams. That's John Adams. I think that's John Adams. <laughs> I could be wrong about that. Um, you know what? I'm going to actually switch him over here. Um, transform, flip. Okay, so I'm going to put this llama on this guy right here. And that hat actually looks pretty good right there. But you'll notice his nose is poking out, and that's weird. And his chin is poking out, and that's weird. So how do I remove something out of a background? Um, there's Again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a really simple way to do this using Photopia. Okay, um, The easiest way that I have found. I'm going to go to my background layer here. So I turn my my llama head off so I can just deal with the background. Okay. Uh, the tool that I'm going to use at the moment is this guy right here, which is called the patch tool. Okay. If you don't see your patch tool, you probably have this tool, this little band-aid showing instead, the spot healing brush. If you hold down your cursor on that... Um, uh, on that tool, you'll see that there are other tools in there, and I'm going to use this one right here, which is called the patch tool. Okay, uh, what the patch tool does is it takes information from one area and copies it to another area. Okay, so let's say I want to get rid of the whole front of this guy's head. Okay, and I want to replace it with more wall, so it looks like when I turn this back on that it's just wall behind him. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm using the patch tool. Um, here's how the patch tool works, first of all. Uh, let's say I wanted to get rid of this guy completely. Okay, uh, What I do is draw a selection around the thing that I want to get rid of. In this case, this guy back here in the green. Okay, So I'm drawing a box or, or whatever, a selection around him. It doesn't need to be completely perfect, but um, there it goes. And now all I need to do this is, uh, this is super cool. I love this. If you click and drag inside the selection you just made, watch what happens. Okay, so I'm dragging up until all I see there is just wall. And then when I let go, boom, he's gone. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But it's pretty good for what we are trying to do. Now, there's a weird spot right here. I could just do another patch like this and select another area 
to uh, touch up those areas. In this case, I want to get rid of this guy's face over here. So I'm going to draw a selection around the whole front part of his face, just like so. Okay, and then I'm, when I click and drag, again, I want a selected area that just has wall in it, and then his face disappears. Now when I turn my llama back on, you'll see that it looks a lot better. Okay, now is this perfect? No, it's not perfect. There are other techniques that you can use. Um, probably the best technique is using this guy right here, the clone tool. Um, the way the clone tool works is a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, it copies from one area and paints into another area. Um, example, if I wanted to make a copy here of uh, Benjamin Franklin, all layers, right there, copy. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. There we go. Um, so what I'm doing here is cloning Benjamin Franklin, making a copy of him elsewhere. Um, so for example, if I wanted to replace a head with a Benjamin Franklin head, um, this is how the clone, st the stamp tool or clone stamp, it's called the clone stamp in Photoshop. Here it's just called the clone tool. Um, the way it works is you hold the Alt key, click on a thing that you want to copy, and then when you start painting, uh, it will make a copy of that thing. Okay. Now, what I've done here is um, I created a new layer. And then up here at the top, before I used my clone stamp, I said source all layers. Okay. If you have this set to all layers and you have a new layer created, then you will be able to uh, make a perfect clone copy of boop, a different part of your picture. So in this case, I just copied his head from there and made another copy of him over there. Okay, so the clone stamp is better technically, uh, but it's definitely a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to suggest right now that you just try using the stamp, or I'm sorry, the patch tool, this guy. Um, let me do it again. Let's say I don't like this guy over here. He bothers me. Here's my patch tool. I'm on my background. I'm going to draw a selection around the guy. And again, this will not give you perfect results, but uh, it should be good enough for our purposes right now. So I've got a selection around him. And then when I click and drag him up, I'm now copying this area of the wall like so. Okay. Pretty cool when you really uh, see how simple it works. Like there it is with with him, and there it's gone. So again, it's not perfect, but uh, but it look it works okay for our purposes for right now. Okay, so um, we'll go back to that. Leave it like that. So this is what I've done. Uh, I have taken all of these different heads and replaced all of them. Uh, I patched the background in a few spots, and as you can see, you can't really tell too much. There's a few spots where you can kind of see that I've patched certain things, but, you know, overall it looks um, pretty pretty consistent, I would say. So I want you to give it a try. Um, uh, the only requirement for me is that you combine at least two pictures together. Okay, I don't care what pictures you use. They can be your own pictures or pictures from the Internet, um, and I just want you to use the... Uh, masking function uh, to create a layer mask to remove part of the layer and combine two pictures together. That's it. Um, you'll see here that every one of my layers that I added has a mask attached to it. Now, I've done a couple of other things here in case you're interested in a little bit more advanced technique. Uh, number one is the colors didn't match very well. Okay, So I use this hue saturation adjustment to lower... I don't know if that's going to show up in the video, but I lowered the color saturation of these llama heads over here because their color was very, very bright compared to the background and intense. So I wanted to lower that a little bit. So I took some of the color out like so. Um, I also 
used a texture on top of the entire thing, which kind of makes it look a little bit more unified and makes everything kind of fit together nicely. Uh, if you want to add a texture, it's a very simple uh, matter to do that. Um, here is the site TextureKing.com, which I love. It's great. It's loaded with lots of great free textures that you can use. Um, they're all broken down by different categories. Um, let's say I wanted dirt and sand. Okay. Uh, and let's say I wanted to use, I don't know, this one. Um, all you have to do is click on it to open it up, right click, copy image, back to Photopia, edit, paste. So there is my photo that I just downloaded. Now, um, I can edit, transform, scale to change the size. Okay, in this case, I want the size to be the size of the whole picture, like so. All right, uh, and then for this to work as a texture, um, I'm gonna play with my blending, which is up here at the top of my layers. So right above my layers is this thing that says normal. It also says opacity. If I just lower the opacity, it makes my layer transparent or translucent, so you can see through it. Um, but I can also change my blending mode right here. Uh, these determine how this layer blends with the layers that are under it. Okay, so at the moment, it's on normal, which means that whichever layer is on top covers up everything else. If I change this mode to something like, let's say, overlay, it makes it appear kind of transparent, like that. Um, in this case, that's like really bold and really strong, and I don't really like how that looks. So I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit as well. Um, now, this texture looks ridiculous. It has grass and stuff in it. Uh, but for the texture that I actually did use in my picture, this one, um, it just has a subtle textural effect. I'll show you what it looked like normally. So this is the original texture that I use. It's a uh, sidewalk, okay? Uh, downloaded from TextureKing.com, okay? Um, and again, I set it to overlay, which really toned it down a lot. And then I changed the opacity here to just soften the effect, okay? And the, re the result of using that texture here is just to kind of make it look more like the uh, background image and the images that I've added in kind of belong together. Uh, without it, uh, without the texture, the heads clearly stand out and look a little bit weird. Uh, I think the texture helps a lot, and it makes the whole picture appear kind of like like it belongs together. Okay, so the combination here of my texture adjustment, along with my hue and saturation adjustment, makes all those heads appear that they kind of belong there. If I wanted to make additional adjustments, like let's say I think some areas are too light or too dark, you should already know how to do this. We did this in a previous uh, lesson. Um, I could use, for example, a curves adjustment. Um, I could adjust colors with hue saturation. Um, if I wanted to, let's say, change the color of one of these llamas, if I am not crazy about the way that they look, I can clearly change the color of anything that I want. Um, Let's say I wanted to give Jefferson a blue coat instead of a red coat. Um, so I adjust my hue slider here until I get the color the way that I want. And then remember, this layer has a mask on it. Okay, we've done this before. Now I can use my brush, switch to black, and paint out all the areas that I don't want to have that effect. Okay, so using these techniques, I should be able to create... Um, essentially anything that I can imagine, anything that I want to create, I should be able to do using these basic techniques. Masking, texturing, um, etc. So now I have this layer that is changing Jefferson's coat from red to blue or purple, whatever. Um, good luck. Have fun. Hopefully that isn't too difficult. Remember, you can always pause and rewind the video if you get stuck. Um, again, this is uh, I am you are going to get credit for doing this, uh, but all I'm asking you to do is to combine 
two different pictures together. You don't need to do it like I've done here where I've combined, you know, 20 plus pictures together. Um, find a picture that you want from the internet or use a picture that you already have. Could be a picture of, well, there's the power tools again. Um, could be a picture uh, of family or friends and you want to switch heads or something like that. Um, have fun. Go nuts. Spend as much time on it as you want. And uh, that's it. Good luck.